Hi, so today we have quite a few gambits to go over and first let's start off with something which could happen in the d4 opening against the d4 repertoire but it's not really the strongest or even a good gambit to play as black but it is something which could come out a few times and then it's a quite a nice idea to just like check it out and like learn it once and once you learn the basic concept then after that you will never have a problem with it so the gambit i'm, I'm talking about is the england gambit which is the d4 uh, and then e5 which is sacrificing the pawn on e5 now white should take this there is no point in pushing because then bishop c5 and the black bishop is, has a really good square so after white captures black plays knight to c6 this is like the only real try to go get the pawn back on e5 and after knight f3 comes the move queen to e7 trying to gain the pawn now black could have played some like pawn d6 to try to go after the pawn on e5 but then you can just take it and after that white just has to develop very solidly and then it's a simple pawn up so after queen a7, the pawn is under pressure, so white plays bishop to f4. And then here comes the main idea for black uh, doing queen b4 check, going after the king, bishop and the pawn at the same time. But there is a really good solution for white, so white just goes and plays bishop to d2. Now the queen has to take on b2, and then here is the important po portion. So white has to play the knight to c3. Uh, the main trick for black, which I will show, but only for the reason to like be in knowing it, but you don't really want to play it, is that after bishop c3, the trick for black is that they want to go bishop b4, and now unfortunately there is the pin on the c3 bishop, so we can't take the queen, and if we take the bishop, then they will just take back with the knight, and suddenly the c2 square is is hanging c2 pawn is hanging by the knight which is just winning the rook or even tethering checkmate why the e1 rook is also hanging so this is just like game over so white could have tried to play queen d2 trying to defend but then they would capture on c3 and once if knight captures the rook is hanging if queen captures then there is this like very unfortunate checkmate for black so this would be the main idea behind this whole opening the England gambit but all what you have to know with white is that instead of taking going with the bishop to c3 you just play knight to c3 and now you defended the rook on a1 after which you can just go and react to bishop b4 which would be attacking the knight on c3 with the move rook to b1 queen could go away rook to b3 Queen has to go back to a5 to keep some pressure there. And then here there are multiple moves, but they are, my favorite move here for white is e4. And suddenly, even though black got the pawn back, there's a giant, giant development advantage for white, not to mention lots of different threats which are coming after. Uh, so for example, after knight g7, white could play a3, which if gets, uh, so black captures on c3, white can't capture sorry black can't capture on a3 because then the move knight to d5 is just too threatening so has to capture on c3 bishop captures back and once the queen moves just a simple move bishop to goes back to b2 and then now knight b rook b5 is threatening to trap the queen which is really hard to defend against even though black could hold that one on the position is still much much better for white now instead of bishop b4, black could try to play knight b4 as well, going after the c2's pawn, but then the simple knight d4 move, and then if they play c5, you have just rook b1 again, kicking the queen away, and then this is all more, is already just like winning, because after queen a3 comes the move knight to b, db5, queen has to go back to a5 to defend the c7 fork, but then after e a3, kicking the knight away, the move knight to d5 is just smashing. And even though black could play queen d8, but if you look at the position, white is way more developed, got the center. So now in the following moves, just like they play something like e4, bishop to c4, castle, and the position is just pretty much kill killing it for black. 
so the England Gambit itself is not really an opening you have to worry about. You just have to learn this one trick with uh, when they play want to play for this bishop c3 bishop b4 but as long as you play knight to c3 in the sixth move it is just a really good opening and black is going to be in big big trouble so now let's take a look at something of a more a better gambit for black which is actually more popular and there's a reason for it because it is definitely better than the england gambit which is named the budapest gambit now this is a better version because first of all white already played c4 which could create some weakness at one point or at least the bishop b4 checks could be better and at the same time as well when once white captures which is still what white should do there is no point of pushing because again the bishop black bishop can develop and it will have a very good square on c5 or at least sometimes on b4 as well so white captures now black has two choices so I would say 9g4 is the main move which is more played while if knight e4 happens it's trying to be a little bit more aggressive because it's more about trying to put pressure on f2 and the d2 square then getting back the pawn on e5. Now it doesn't really change much because either knight e4 or knight g4 white just wants to play develop with knight f3 and comes uh, here black choose between three different moves uh, there are probably even more moves but like those are the more logical ones so black could try to go bishop c5 going after the pawn on f2 which obviously has to be defended by e3 and then now they have again a choice they could try to do the check now because at least they forced white to play e3 but i don't think that's really accomplishing anything because now just a simple bishop d2 move which is blocking and even though he could try to keep the bishop pair up for black but the problem is after knight c6 just the a3 move is very strong which forces the bishop to take on d2 after queen d2 it's going to be similar to some other lines in the following the later on and uh, the bishop if it go back then there is just like going to be really hard for black to get back the pawn on e5 and it's just, like not not really any good so instead of bishop b4 knight c6 would be a little bit more common but then the same move come come with a3 which is setting up for b4 bishop b2 and if for example the black plays knight g5 you just go b4 uh, after capture capture just bishop b2 and see simple white just defended the pawn on e5 white has better pawn structure extra pawn very strong pawn in the center it is just like completely winning for white so this bishop c5 is not really strong uh d6 would be another interesting move trying to open up everything in the middle and the idea is that if white captures bishop captures and black get, tries to gain some compensation by having a little bit faster development but now the very strong move for white is just simple queen c2 it puts the e4 knight under pressure and now the logical move is bishop f5, which we will check in a second, but knight c5 would be also an option, but then the very simple bishop pg5 attacking the queen. Once he blocks, we just go and trade off everything, and the simple knight c3 developing move. Now rook to d1 can follow up with e3, bishop e2, white is a pawn up, and there is no real compensation for black. So bishop f5 looks a little bit more natural, and it's also trying to set up some tricks. But their problem is it's actually not working. So now white has the very strong move knight c3, putting more pressure on an e4 knight. Knight jumps away to g3, trying to do the discover attack. But then the follow-up move with white e4 is very, very strong. Now, black probably would have, have to capture an e4 because it's even worse for him if he lets the pawn capture on f5. And after capture, capture knight h1, the simple move bishop g5 now, and black White is going to go long castle, develop their bishop, and then first of all, there's a strong attack in the center, better development, and the h1 knight is also not going to come out. And once we capture that one back, we will, we will be ahead even in material, not just in position. So again, d6 is not really the strongest. So in this position, probably bishop b4 is the main, would be the main idea. Now, I would play probably knight to d2 because there is no point of just letting them take. Even bishop d2 is reasonable, but knight d2 is very simple because again, we are trying to gain that b2 square for our bishops. So after something like knight c6, we go a3, 
Now we would be happy if the bishop goes back because, first of all, he can't go back immediately, but he could try to take on d2 and then retreat with the knight. If uh, knight takes on d2, just take back with the bishop again. You're happy with the trade. Uh, and then after bishop takes, you can just take back with the bishop again. If they play something like castle, you just play bishop f4. Now you defended your pawn e5 and bishop d3 is coming. So white is just like pretty much winning. Uh, d6 again, very similar, you just go capture, bishop e3, try to trade the queen, after that you can, white can just play with g3, bishop g2, free and chattering their bishop, and then developing. So the main concept is almost the same in all of these positions, if you can get the, keep the pawn, because you can trade it off, then after that you just want to play it safely, develop with your pieces, and then castle, and after that look around, because you are up a pawn. Now knight d2 would be the main line, and then after queen captures comes queen e7, trying to get the pawn back on e5, but the knight is the very simple move, queen c3, which is defending the e5 pawn. Now there are a few different games here when ways white could white or black could play. I would say it's altogether it is just a more comfortable position for white. For example, like, let me just show you one line among many. Uh, after b6, e3, bishop b7, bishop e2, so like both sides are just developing. And black could try to go this long castle version, because at least they are thinking, okay, if white will go short castle, then at least if they will have some play with like g5 pushes on the king side. Uh, but there's not really anything to worry about. So for example, white in one of the games played c5, which is just very strong trying to open up the c5. Not really worried about the trades, because after that rook c1 is going to go after the c5 weakness, and it's going to be really hard for uh, black to do anything about. And there's like, there was a game followed with this like, rook e8, c, b, a, b, and rook c1, which is defending the pawn e5, because now there's a threat on c7. And after some like king b8, white just goes castle. And actually this is a very comfortable position for white. White. Now I want to set up, show you one trick here. So for example, after g5, trying to go get the pawn back, there is this really f nice move with rook fd1, and then after g4 there's the move knight d4, which actually defends the pawn on e5. So the knight can't capture on e5, because there is queen c7, which is obviously just winning, because then the king is all open and everything is falling. And black also can't capture with queen e5, because then here is a trick for White, which White set up very nicely with this rook fd1 move, uh, knight c6 check, bishop takes, take the queen, and then rook takes c6, which is using the pin along the d-file to just gain an, a piece and just win the game. Now obviously this is just an explanation line, uh, it doesn't have to follow it like that, but altogether the idea is, once you get to this position of 9 queen c3, where you defend the e5 pawn, it's going to be very hard for black to get the back the pawn, and even then it's going to be less developed and white will have more space. So it altogether just gives an advantageous position for white. Now this knight e4 line is altogether not really the strongest. I would say probably knight to g4 is a better move, which is going after the pawn on e5. Now knight to f3 is defending the pawn obviously, and then here again they have a choice. They could go knight c6, which is the main line, or we, they could go bishop c5 again. But then just a simple e3, similarly than before, defending the f2 pawn. And then the idea is after knight c6, the a3 would be really nice. Now the idea with a3 is we, again we want to go pawn b4 and the bishop b2, after which we just have a very comfortable position. Black should probably push it, block it with a5. But then after b3, castle, bishop b2, uh, let's say he could go rook e8. Now there's also queen e7 and other moves, but queen e7 is probably a worse one, because after knight to c3, you have some extra tempos with knight d5. Uh, and after rook e8, bishop e2, they could get the pawn back. But it's not really a problem, because the idea is that now all of this trade, after some trades, knight e5 for example, uh, white is always having a little bit of a better position because their bishop on b2 is just like really strong not to mention the knight is going to be very strong on d5 or at some point on b5 now 
in this position. Actually, white could play a pretty interesting move, which is just go queen c2. And he don't care about the bishop on f3, because the idea is that if black captures, then suddenly the g file is opening up for white's attack. So after something like pawn d6, just could come long castle with following up rook g1 and knight to d5, after which white is having a very comfortable position with a very strong attack. Now this is obviously doesn't have to go all the way. If white would want to, they could even just play bishop to e2, then usually those positions are slightly better for white as well. Uh, so the main line again is knight e6 first, which force well, doesn't force white, but white should try to defend the pawn on e5, make it harder for black to get it back. And then here, black could again play bishop c5, it's very, very similar. After e3, queen e7, trying to get the pawn back, but then knight c3, which is very, very comfortable. And here there's actually even a little trick, is that capturing on e5 is actually losing now, because white can just go capture on e5, knight captures, and then knight to d5 move, which is now obviously it is threatening on c7, on e7, the knight on e5 has to be defended. The only move which kind of tries to defend everything is at the same time as queen d6, but now queen h5 is just winning because there is a pin on e5, the knight can't be defended, and there is no pawn f6 move because of the pin on the pawn. Uh, Black could play bishop b4, but then just a simple king d1 move, after which the e5 knight is just losing. Like, it's lost, so white is going to be a piece up. So again, instead of bishop c5, usually bishop b4 immediately is better, because the e3 move is actually just like a useful thing for white to have, it helps the development. So bishop b4, knight to d2, again, black could probably go even with castle, but queen e7 is more popular, uh, e3, capture on e5, that's usually we want to trade one of the knights, and then just a simple bishop e2 move. And then now castle. Uh, and white goes also castle. And here in these positions, black has a big choice to make. So they could take on d2, because now that we are castled, the, the, the pin is over, and then the knight is able to move. But then after these positions, white could just play something like b4, maybe if they want to go c5 is also very strong because we have the simple queen d5 reaction so for example if they would take we just take back and the queen d5 there's going to be a fork on the a8 rook and the e5 knight uh, if they play something like bishop b7 to try to develop then we can just do very simple go into this structure by capture on d5 and now there is a d6 pawn which is uh, a weakness which white can play against with like something like rook fd1 rook ac1 and altogether, this position is just better for white. There's a bishop pair, there's a weak uh, d6 pawn, and white's got a little bit uh, of a better position, without any worry something. Uh, while if he doesn't take the knight on d2, they could play probably pawn to d6, They're just like trying to develop, but then I think the very strong move is just a simple knight to b3, because now we are going after the bishop, it cannot really escape, it doesn't have any squares, so if they do something like, um, I would say probably b6 again to kind of like get ready because after a3 they go bishop c5, but knight takes, they have the option to take with the b pawn, which is better, because again if d, d, talk, d pawn takes then queen d5 is just going to be crushing, and after b takes just a simple move for white b4, and again bishop pair, better pawn structure, a little bit of a stronger pieces as well at the same time. I would say it's a very comfortable position to play for white. So altogether, the Budapest Gambit is more realistic uh, to play as an idea for black than the England Gambit. It gives up the pawn, but here it is pretty likely that black is going to get it back. But there is like probably some more aggressive versions with white as well, but I think this is the simplest. You just get to like a comfortable middle game position where you usually have the bishop pair and a little bit of a better structure. And it's very simple, uh, very straightforward, and it also gives a very comfortable position for white. So I think that's, for it. that's it for these gambit lines. Now there are some other ones which we'll check out in following videos.